Newly obtained emails shed light on spying allegations against Harford County Executive Bob Cassily and his apparent request to monitor other county officials. Mayor Scott defending his youth, youth curfew plan. Fox 45 questions the messaging as juvenile crime is up and the plan has fewer resources dedicated to it. More dirt bike seizures in Baltimore as the city touts its task force, but the man charged with possession of the bikes hasn't been found. We have team coverage on the new development surrounding two city enterprises as Vincent Hill examines the mayor's curfew message. Let's begin with Jeff Abel and the dirt bike seizures in Pigtown, where those residents have been sending in noise complaints. Jeff. That's right. You know, residents throughout this city have long complained that the roar of dirt bikes was terrorizing their neighborhoods. Well, tonight, residents in one neighborhood are finally getting a little peace and quiet. In South Baltimore, residents admit the peace is slowly returning to Pigtown. They have long been terrorized by the sounds of dirt bikes, which have routinely turned this roadway into a raceway. It goes straight up and down the street. But police appear to be making progress in the war on illegal dirt bikes. Two months ago, they recovered 33 illegal dirt bikes from a Mondaman business. And on Washington Boulevard this week, officers moved in on a row house where police say they recovered two more illegal bikes. A 29-year-old has been charged, but yet to be arrested. You always wonder, like, what is really going on um, in my neighborhood? Throughout the city this year, officers have seized 104 dirt bikes, made 17 arrests, and have issued eight warrants and 37 court summons to those connected to illegal dirt bikes. With technology nowadays, uh, it's basically an investigative work. In May, detectives described how technology was helping in their war on illegal bikes. Uh, we utilize City Watch, Foxtrot video, other cameras in the city uh, to, to identify the riders. This takes away that whole chase mentality. <laughs> While seizures are up from this time last year, many residents are hopeful but reluctant to declare victory quite yet. You know, I've been here for three, four years and, you know, really want to see a better change for our society. Well, tonight, detectives are calling that 29-year-old wanted in the seizures in Pigtown as an active participant in the illegal dirt bikes. We're live tonight. Jeff Abel, Fox 45 News. Thank you, Jeff. These seizures come after a new law took effect in Baltimore City late last year. It allows stiffer penalties for those involved in street racing, shutting down intersections, or caught riding dirt bikes in the city. Offenders face up to a $1,000 fine and 12 months in jail if convicted of the misdemeanor charge. But that's not the only thing at play here. Some are pointing to the upcoming election as well. Political analyst John Deedy says the mayor's attack on quality of life crimes could have a lot to do with the campaign season. Things can be awful for three years, but in the election year, if people feel better, they will have amnesia about the previous three years because they will look and see how are things at the moment, and that's how voters will think. Didi says even if action like the dirt bike law was unsuccessful, it would be enough for politicians to look like they're taking action to get voters' attention. Well, Mayor Brandon Scott touting success of his youth curfew plan at last night's public comment meeting. But a recent rise in juvenile crime and funneling of resources away from the program have some wondering if the program is worthy of praise. Fox 45's Vincent Hill joins us live with pushback on the mayor's comments. Vincent. Yeah, Mary, when that curfew first went into effect, the mayor said people would have questions about what it would look like. Now that big question is, was it effective? The city's youth curfew, which went into effect Memorial Day weekend, is set to end in less than four weeks. We have seen, and I've heard from not just BPD, but also from our partners in school police, uh, a lot of good results. During a town hall Wednesday night, Mayor Brandon Scott calling it a success. But many Baltimore residents... So did you know that Mayor had put a curfew in this, this summer? No. Didn't know it existed. The last curfew I remember was pretty great curfew. Only a few weeks in, the mayor rolling back on the curfew, closing one of the connection centers and cutting the staff to just one volunteer after no youth had been transported for a curfew violation. On Wednesday, the mayor offering this explanation. 
We are also employing young people, uh, young people who are above the age of curfew to engage with those young people that they're going home. But not all are going home. We do border um, uh, the, the city county line right there. We're still seeing young people commit crimes. Police say groups of teens went on a crime spree in Anne Arundel County. This video shows a stolen Kia parked around 530 in the morning, hours before three Baltimore City female teens attempt to carjack a woman. This video shows four juveniles arrive in a Hyundai stolen from Baltimore City around 2.30 in the morning before stealing another car. The youngest suspects, according to Anne Arundel Police. I believe one was an 11-year-old and one was a 12-year-old. Fox 45 has asked the mayor's office how many juveniles have been transported to a connection center for a curfew violation several times. The answer was always none, leaving residents to wonder if the city truly cared about curving youth crime. And they just don't care about it. Like, like they don't care about nothing else. And the curfew is set to end on Labor Day. That's one week after Baltimore City Schools return to the classroom. Live at City Hall, Vincent Hill, Fox 45 News. Vincent, thank you. Well, Baltimore residents expressed juvenile crime as a safety concern during this week's public comment sessions with the mayor and acting BPD Commissioner Richard Worley. Those concerns highlighted by the continued investigation into the Brooklyn Day mass shooting in which 15 juveniles were among the 30 victims and many people at the block party that night were under 18. City State's Attorney Ivan Bates says the Child Interrogation Act is hampering the investigation. The law states children can't be questioned by law enforcement without speaking to an attorney first. While advocates argue it's a necessary safeguard for young people, Bates says police hands are tied. But this is what I don't get. Even if the parent says, yes, we can talk to their son or daughter, a lawyer, and here lately it's the public defender, the public defender is saying, you can't talk to my mm. client. Of course, you know, they're not saying that we can talk of course to anyone they're, they're jealously defending their client. They're shutting it down. Matter of fact, I received an email from the public defender in Baltimore City, Ms. Capazello, reminding me what the law was. That's almost waving wow. it in my face. Yeah. Hey, you can't do this. So that's the mentality oh, that they've man. now given to the public defenders in that office here in Baltimore City. On WBAL radio this morning, Mayor Scott admitted it's difficult to investigate the shooting when so many of the people who were at the scene can't be questioned by police. He says there needs to be a balance between young people's rights and accountability. Vox 45 News has obtained an email between Harford County officials shedding light on the spying allegations County Executive Bob Cassidy is facing. Other county officials say Cassidy was illegal mon illegally monitoring them, too, while Cassidy says he was within his right to do so. Amy Simpson has details. New evidence surfacing in the privacy debate between branches of Harford County government. Fox 45 News obtaining this email between two Harford County officials dated May 30th. I'm requesting any and all emails that Aaron Penman may have received to his Harford County government email box from the below individuals. The email says listing five names, including Harford County Sheriff Jeffrey Gaylor and former Harford County Executive Barry Glassman. If I could get this information as soon as possible, that would be greatly appreciated. He uh, overreached his authority. Today, the councilman at the center of that probe telling Fox 45 News this is the evidence he received, prompting his allegations that the county executive illegally monitored his communications, accusing him of spying on another branch of government. Penman and Cassily entangled in a very public political spat after the councilman accused the county executive's office of misusing money. A claim that we've misappropriated $7 million is a pretty serious allegation. So my administration started investigating that. In an exclusive interview with Fox 45 last week, Harford County Executive Bob Cassily shared his side. All email servers are county property and they're, they're subject to, to review by, by county officials. So that's what was done. It was a one-time snapshot. Cassily claims what went on was legal and allowed. There's no basis for anything, uh, the, the, the complaints, the allegations of impropriety. So you stand firm that there was nothing illegal done here? Absolutely. Absolutely. There's nothing illegal done here. He declared it as a, a one-time thing. Only one, one person had, uh, uh, you know, observed the actual emails. Uh, and it was a snapshot. And if you can see from that email... That snapshot was for the entire length of my term in office. Today, Fox 45 News questioning Cassily's office about that directive, requesting any and all of Penman's emails. There was a one-time review of emails, and a total of five emails were reviewed. 
The county executive's office said in a statement, saying all of the emails searched are public record, subject to Freedom of Information Act requests. Once they were reviewed in private by a single individual and found to contain nothing related to the alleged misappropriation, they were destroyed. The content was never disclosed to the county executive. But this privacy debate is already having a ripple effect elsewhere. I was uh, deeply disturbed when I first uh, heard about it. In neighboring Baltimore County, County Council Chairman Julian Jones watching closely to see how things unfold. And I think it's not a good idea uh, and certainly unethical for the executive branch to spy on uh, or rummage through emails of the legislative branch. Baltimore County government and county council communications also share a server. Today, a spokesperson for Baltimore County Executive Johnny Olszewski telling Fox 45 News the administration does not engage in the practice of searching council members' correspondence. Regardless, Jones says what's happening in Harford County is prompting action to protect privacy. Protect the legislative branch from the executive branch. We don't have anything in place, and we're taking a look at that now. Amy Simpson, Fox 45 News.